Hey, this is Michael Lindsay from Bottle MX, and we're here at Shopper Motorsports today. If you're like me, you've probably been to a Supercross or Motocross race and seen the Dunlop guys change some tires, and they make it look way too easy. So we invited our buddy Jay Clark from Dunlop to come down here and show us how to install one of these and how they make it look so darn simple. A lot of guys freak out about this. They think, hey, it's really hard, and it can be hard. Uh, one of the keys is practice and doing it more often. We're going to put on some tires on this uh, KTM 125 for Michael here with our new MX3S Dunlop tires. Pretty simple process if you do everything right, have a good stand, good tools, we'll show you how to do it. Okay, so I start with uh, the rim lock. I'll loosen the rim lock nut out to where it's just a thread or two holding it on. So now I got a valve core remover and I'm gonna remove the valve core all the way. I find it's better just to let, you know, completely out and we put the valve core back in later. So now I'm gonna start, got my Motion Pro tire spoons here and I go just about a quarter of the way away from the rim lock, and I push down to knock the tire off the bead. You see I have the sprocket side up. This is how I start. And once I get the tire all the way off, I, with my fingers I pushed in the rim lock, so now the tire's all the way off the bead. I flip it over to the other side. Again, I find the rim lock, go a little ways away from there, push it down, just like so. So now the tire's all the way off the bead. Now I start about a quarter of the way away from the rim lock and I pull towards me and I get my tire spoon just a little ways in there. And they fall in nice. And now I'm about, you know, three and a half, four inches apart on those first two bites. I use three tire spoons. You can get away with two. And I knock, I make sure the tire stays off the bead over here as I go to take it off. And now, just that, now I'm just down to the two tire spoons like so. And now I'll just use one to take it off the remainder of the way. And I'm taking bites about inch and a half, two inches apart. And I pulled the tire all the way up. And now I'll flip it over and do the same thing now on the other side. I started about a quarter of the way or so away from the rim lock. And I'm working away from the rim lock and again, I'm going about two or three inches apart with each bite. I just feel it pop in, just like so. With these tire spoons, with this shape right here, when this thing goes in the tire, it, you're not going in past it. Like guys will use screwdrivers and different things. If you're using that kind of stuff, you can get in there and pop the tube. With this tire spoon, you go in just till it gets over the lip, pull it, and you're not gonna grab tube. With all the air out of the tube, that tube's away from the you know, from us. Now I use my body to push here and I'll push. I got a gap here with the rim lock. Then I'll pull it towards me, put my tire spoon in here like this. And I can push the tire all the way off. Now this tire stand is a custom stand that I had made. Um, Motion Pro, a few other companies have some good tire stands. I think it's important to be on a tire stand, not on the ground. If you're trying to do this good, this is what I like. I like a center post. Guys will like different things, but get you a tire stand that you can work with. Um, even on a bucket can be a little tough. I like something more firm like this. Now, when I have the wheel off like this, first thing I do is inspect it real quick to make sure that the, the band here, tape or band, whatever you got, is in good shape. No spokes, uh, nipples are you know, protruding through. Everything looks good here. We throw a little baby powder in the tube. And what this, what this does is it helps keep the tube and the tire from kind of bonding together and wearing away. It'll help prevent pinch flats because the tube and the tire are able to work, move inside of each other. So now I'll stuff my tube back in the tire. Now this is a, a step that we all do and you know, a lot of guys don't like to do this step. They, they think that it's more dangerous, you know, as far as pinching a tube than a stock one. So now at this point, I'll put my core back in, my valve core, tighten it back all the way, and then I'll put some air in our tube. So a lot of people ask me how much air to put in it, and it doesn't show up on a gauge when you try to measure it, so it's basically uh, nothing. So, but it feels just about like this. If you see me pushing on it, that's about what it should feel like, and it keeps the tube all nice and taut. I lube up our tire, we use a tire paste 
And when you put it on, you want to get it all the way on and, and on the inside here, like this. So at this point, we put the, the valve uh, stem through the, the hole in the rim here, and we put our nut on. This is what will keep the tube in place for us while we work. Just put it on like about that far. Now, and this one's pretty easy because the rim lock is not opposite us. So all we have to do is push with our body, push the rim lock in, make sure it's not under the tube, and then hold the tire on like so. And now we're going to, I'm using my, what I've been blessed with right here to hold the tire down. And maybe that's some guy's fault problem is they don't have enough of this to hold down. Okay, so you hold down like so, just like that. And you see I'm lifting up on the tire and pushing, lift up a little bit to get my spoon in so I'm not scratching the rim. And then, just like so, now I got one, one bite left. I'm going to pull up and then pop on like so. Now my tire's all the way on. Uh, putting it on on this side right here, the way we just did, there's really not much of a way to pinch the tube. Our only risk is on the next step of putting this last side on. It would be our only, only risk there. So with bikes with the rim lock opposite, we just throw the tire on and then I would just pull this over and you know, push our rim lock up like so until it pops in like so. That's all you do. And make sure that you're in here and in here and your rim lock moves, you're ready to start on you know, the last side. So now I start just a little ways away from the, the valve stem. I have this Motion Pro bead buddy. I have the two rim locks about you know, four or five inches apart here. Place that right there. This is a huge help. Now I'm gonna hold the rim lock in like so and just walk around. And now I'm at this point, I'm making sure the tire stays off the bead. And now it's getting just a little bit harder. So right here, see the tire sitting down. And what I'll even do is come over here and make sure just to push down to make sure it's staying off the bead. One of the biggest problems people do is let this come back up and then that makes these bites really hard. If you're keeping this off the bead, and your tire well lubed up, it becomes a lot easier. Now my bites are only like an inch and a half apart. Now I'm using even my, uh, my thigh to help support me underneath here. Now this is going to be my last bite. I'm about two inches away. And then I can just push down, push with my hand, pull my bead buddy out, and I'm good to go. Now we're going to air it up, pop it on the bead on both sides before we set pressure and, and tighten our rim lock. So this is a good time. I wipe all the tire paste off, and as I'm doing so, I'm inspecting that the, the tires, the beads all the way up, and I'll flip it over and do the same to the other side. Don't forget to check both sides that the bead's on. Inevitably, it'll pop up on the side you're working on, but not the other side. Now I'll tighten the rim lock. Next. And again, rim lock is not something that I have a torque spec for. You want to do it just right. You don't want to over tighten it you can actually break the rim lock and also damage your rim. So you want to get it about this tight right here. It's about right there. Not very tight. So about this tight right here. So if you're stronger than me, then this would be smaller. If you're weaker than me, then yours would be bigger. Like that. Just like so. And then we'll set tire pressure. Now tire pressure is an important thing that um, lots of opinions on, but for most motocross use, we run anywhere from, we want to be say 12 at the lowest up to 14 would be that range. Um, and so the biggest problem is a lot of guys don't check their pressure every day they go ride. When your bike sits for a week or two in the garage, you can lose a pound or two of air. So you'll want to check that every time you ride, make sure you set your pressure. We're out in Southern California. We're usually in the 12, five to 13 range for like tracks like Cuya and Glen Helen tracks that we frequent a lot. We're in those ranges, uh, front and rear. Um, 13 tires can last a little bit better. That's what they're designed to run in. A lot of guys off-road wise will want to run really low pressures. The tires aren't really designed to run at those low pressures. So in, in that range is pretty good. So right here, I got our cap on and I've backed it right down to the nut. Now, a lot of people put this nut down at the rim. This is a mistake because if you ever do run low on pressure, the tire spins it'll tear the stem off the tube. So you want to have your nut touching the cap like that 
and that's how you finish it up. Hey, so that's it. We put our cool tire stickers on. Uh, this thing's ready to go race. Uh, now, a lot of guys go, oh, you make that look too easy. I've even had comments before where guys go, oh, you're not using a real, that's a stunt tire. You know, that's an easier tire than a regular tire. It's a, it's a regular tire. Um, it's all about practice. Uh, guys are good at whatever they do a lot. I do a lot of tires, can do 20, up 20 or 30 a week sometimes. So it becomes pretty second hand to, to do uh, tires. But I think you can do them yourself if you follow a lot of those techniques. I've had a lot of guys that have followed my, the techniques that we use at Dunlop and they tell us, oh, that helped, and I, I was able to do it, and I didn't pinch a tube. So follow those techniques, use the good tools to stand, and you'll be uh, in great shape.